Well, we came into the season needing 50 points minimum to survive in the National League. Quarter of the season almost gone. We're halfway there. Hello and welcome to Unemployed to Legend episode 13 with Coz and Ashton. My name is Craig and coming up on today's episode we have two National League games, one of them on the telly against Bournemouth Wood and also away against Maidstone. Now, since you were last with me, probably a bit of a spoiler, with the league table, I'll just show, show you the form since the start of the season. We saw the first two games in the last episode but since then we've kept up a fantastic run in the league. Uh, winning one, two, three, four four, five, six, five of the next six league games that draw away against Woking. To be honest, that's still a pretty good result. But the game against, uh, not against Dagnum, it was a good result, but against Oldham, 5-1. Considering Oldham used to be our senior affiliate, they dropped into the National League for this season and we just completely crushed them. A hat-trick from Jack McKay, who has really stepped up to be the lead striker in our team at the moment. But that has left us top of the league, 25 points from nine games, halfway to that minimum target of 50. So, so happy uh, with the start to the season. I'm very much aware we are using the promotion bounce of last season. So I don't know how long this is going to last for, but it's about getting the points on the board while that bounce does actually last. Uh, also, since the last time you were with me, uh, we have made a couple of new signings as well. Liam Coyle I showed you in the last episode. He had just come in before our first game. Since then we have signed Sam Durant, a right winger, 21-year-old Englishman, three-star current ability, four-star potential. He comes in on a free from Blackburn Rovers and he, he's played a few games already. Two starts, a goal, an assist and a player of the match award already. National League standard, he was showing as Football League. I mean, he could still he, he could still be a Football League player in the future, but there is room for him to effectively grow into a much more rounded player, which is excellent. He's physically very good. He'll uh, match up in this division very, very well, I think. And the latest signing, which was just a couple of weeks before, uh, Bradley Taylor on loan from Warsaw, 19 year old English left back slash centre back, he's 6 foot 1 so he can cover there as well, uh, 2 star comfortability, 4 star potential, he was 4.5 star but uh, he's not exactly played, Swiderski has basically just been playing at left back even though Matty Waters is now available again but Bradley Taylor comes in over Matty Waters, he is a, actually he's a north south uh, standard player but with that potential to be in the National League so I think he would be alright for us this season and he is going to be, spoiler actually, he's going to be playing in the first game against Bournemouth so we will be able to see what he is like. He's not going to be playing as a defensive fullback, he's going to be playing as a fullback on supports. <clears throat> Ignore the dribbling. Ignore the dribbling. Right, so let's, oh, and one more thing. Um, I mentioned in the last episode I was doing a coaching course. I've now completed it, so I'm now National B license holder one star reputation fantastic i now match the club's overall reputation but look at those attributes they're starting to get a lot a lot higher now which is excellent as is my reputation 20 percent is up to now you start the game on like five percent so i'm becoming much more known in the football world so he's hoping eventually job offers will start to open up for us across not just england but also europe Although I don't know if my adaptability <laughs> is really going to help me get any jobs abroad at this point. But for now, my focus is purely on Kurz and Ashton. And we are going in with a heavily rotated squad because this is a midweek game. And just to show you, yep, yeah, we have a game on Saturday as well. So there's going to be a lot of different players that we're going to be viewing in this episode. So this is the starting 11 for the game against Bournemouth on the telly, no less. Vucevic in goal. Taylor with his first start of the season, in fact his first appearance of the season overall, we just had a look at him, on loan from Walsall, he was hoping he does a good job at left back to give me something to think about. Younger and Collins at centre back, Collins is actually, in fact I'll come to him in a moment, let me just go through the rest of the team first, Latty Fairweather at right back, Smith and Coyle in central midfield, Curran and Durant on the wings, Knowles and Moteng up front. Knowles has actually been given a part-time contract, his first one of the save, he's been sitting on non-contract for over a year and purely I've 
offered him a contract, even though he's 30 years old, because he is a highly influential player. And we don't have many of those. Only Jack McKay has actually stepped up to be a highly influential player. Which is fine, because he's a star player for us as it stands, and he'll be playing in games. He's just not playing today because he's tired after the weekend. Uh, let's go out there and uh, keep the good form going. Excellent. Ooh, some inspired and motivated players. We are on the tennis, so we get the nice fancy graphics. Oh, I didn't realise Smith actually has a face. That's one heck of a game face Scott Smith has on him. I think this is only his second or third start, so it'll be interesting to see how he does from the off. He hasn't really shown much yet, but here is hoping uh, that he puts in a good performance today because it would be good to see him in form as well as Adebiyi, who's also been rested because, say it with me, he's tired. Uh, I was going to say about Michael Collins, actually, our central defender. He is... Uh, under he was under offer, so of which uh, from another club which I rejected because they only offered like 1.7k for him. He wasn't happy. Had to agree with a fee, a fee with him. If a club comes in and offers 18,000 pounds, then we will sell him on. What a goal, by the way! That is beautiful. Durant's just driving us forward. A nice ball across no man's land. Uh, the corridor of uncertainty. That's what it's called. And right into the path of Knowles. That's what I want Knowles to do. Put it in the back of the net. Let Durant and Curran do all the creative work. Fantastic start. On the telly as well. These players are putting themselves in the shop window. But Michael Collins, I had to agree, an £18,000 fee with him. If a team comes in for, for him with that amount, then he is going to be off. So I am currently sourcing some more central defenders who we'll look at bringing in later on in the season if uh, needs be because obviously if we lost Collins he is our best central defender now along with Godsmark Ford who again he's tired so he's not playing in this game but it was a bit uh, nervy when he said he demanded to be allowed to talk to the club who was offering for him in the first place what a shot by a Moteng I haven't seen much of that this season it's only his third goal of the season He's very much been the player who we aim the ball at. Okay, he's a target forward. So that kind of makes sense. But he hasn't been among the goals as much this season so far. It's been more Jack McKay, but that was certainly a way to announce that he's back in the goals. But for now, Collins, he is in today. He hasn't performed spectacularly this season. If anything, Harry Flowers is probably pushing him. And Ollie Younger are probably pushing him for a starting place. Uh, corner here. Or Bournemouth and Vucevic keeps hold of that with relative ease, thank goodness. Now I've asked him to roll it out and he never bloody does, does he? Uh, goalkeepers in FM22, they never listen to the instructions of just roll it out. But like I said, this game is on telly. We are putting ourselves out there for the world to see. And these are a group of players who are very young and hungry, a lot of them. And they haven't actually shown this yet. Uh, in the squad screen, a lot of players, about 15 or 16 out of our 23-man squad, are 23 years or under. So I've basically brought in a lot of players who are hungry. They haven't got much experience, but they are hungry to prove themselves. And I think that's showing uh, at the start of this season. We've got the energy, we've got the drive over a lot of teams in the National League. And thankfully it's shown itself in the first half here. We are 2-0 up against Bournemouth. Uh, well done control and possession so far, that's what we want, keep it up. <clears throat> and Bournemouth are a very established team in the National League. E even in real life, they're very, very good. They've got their own set of young players who are hungry. And there is Durant, and I think that's just off the bar, looping down. All he needed to be was a bit further out, and that would probably have gone in. But in real life, Bournemouth, uh, as of when I'm recording this on Wednesday, I went to see them against, who did they face? Wildstone last night and yeah that team is young and hungry especially with their forward players who are going to trouble any team in the division right i am looking at joe mcglynn to come on i'm probably going to put Knowles as the target forward mcglynn has actually impressed a little bit as a poacher he hasn't scored yet but he has got an assist he's got the pace up front he just hasn't got the finishing yet i don't know if that's just a confidence thing but it is something I am looking at with a lot of interest. <clears throat> As we have a corner here and Coyle doesn't get to the ball in time. Cohen gets it back into Coyle. 
was going to say, can Coyle strike a ball? He's playing as the ball winning midfielder today, so I wouldn't expect it. And there is McGlynn, and there is the goal that he needed. Never mind, it's been chalked off. <sighs> okay, so he can finish. He just needs to stay on side. He's had the ball in the back of the net twice this season, and uh, it's been ruled out for offside twice. Right, so we do have a couple more substitutions. Uh, Lati Fairweather is looking very tired. Koro is just going to have to go to right back and add a BE or Svidersky. I haven't seen Svidersky in midfield this season, so you know what? We are going to play him in as the ball winning midfielder or Mazala. Actually, I think Smith, yeah, Smith can go over to that ball winning midfielder. Svidersky can go in as the Mazala. And we are going to go with Harry Flowers in for Younger. Or Younger, he's not exactly playing many games at the moment, but he is getting very tired very quickly. I thought he had some good natural fitness on him. In fact, let me just have a, have a look at him. Oh, his natural fitness is like nine. Right, it's uh, it's mm, it's not that good. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's just do a bit of game management in the meantime. You know I love to do a bit of game management. Just see the game out. Firstly, I'd just like us to get the ball down the other end and just kind of leave it there. And I don't know how Bradley didn't win the ball there, but it's in... We do win it in the end, a sloppy ball by Bournewood, and that helps us massively. Durant, who can you find up front? Go on, you've got options there. Uh, I was going to say, no, he was trying to find Curran, but the ball's turned over again for the second time in this move. Highlight's going on a bit too long now, and that's never a good sign, especially when you lose the ball twice. And that was just terrible. Who was that? That was Flowers who missed the header, right? Okay, so the man, I've had to promise him game time. And he suddenly does that. Not ideal, is it, when you miss a header? Mm. He's not the shortest player on the pitch. But thankfully, we are going to hold on for a 2-1 win. Should have been more comfortable than that, but I'm going to put that down to Flowers just... I don't know. Maybe he's not tall enough? We weren't at our best, but we got the result. Yeah, exactly. We weren't at our best. I've seen, obviously, more impressive performances, but... 28 points from 10 games I'm going to take that all day long now on to Maidstone alright second game up against Maidstone and we are going with a slightly different starting 11 because we obviously had the game in midweek so the main change is Fidersky is back at left back uh, in place of what was his name again? Taylor that was it I'll, I'll get used to some of these players names eventually it won't take that long. Godsmark Ford is in at the back alongside Harry Flowers who is actually starting despite his uh, big mistake in the last game. I do want to fulfil his promise so that way he can stop hounding me for game time. And Liam Coyle will step in for Latty Fairweather at right back because Fairweather is a little bit tired. Adabi and Doug Moore are back in central midfield. Thomas and Hales Doherty on the wings and Jack McKay is partnering a Moteng up front. Joe McGlynn, he'll stay on the bench this time as well. But I am starting to think about uh, starting him in a few more games. But we'll see. We'll see how things go. And Lean Coyle is the only one latch, uh, lacking match fitness even. And I'm aware that Hale Stockerty got injured in the last game. He was out for two to three days. So apparently he's had to go through a fitness test of all things. So he probably won't play the entire game. Uh, we're doing well. Don't let our good form come to an end. Yeah, well, we're doing well. Let's try and keep the form up as long as possible. The aim is still to get to 50 points as soon as possible, but with 28 points on the board, more than halfway there now, it's certainly looking good for at least avoiding relegation, which is excellent. That's exactly what the board want. Uh, general info for them, body language for them, because I have to keep doing that in every single game. But here we go, away against Maidstone, another established National League club, and we take the lead after just nine minutes. God's Mark Ford, a true powerhouse in the penalty area. He's only six foot one, bear that in mind. He's not a giant, but he's got such a long neck on him. He must have, because he just reaches for those balls with ease and puts us 1-0 up. I think that's his third or fourth goal of the season. Very happy to see that. And we have a highlight straight from kickoff. Well, one there by, I think that was Adabi or was that uh, Dugmore? I'm going to assume that's Dugmore. He's the ball winning midfielder after all. Thomas into McKay, slightly through. There's Hales Doherty. Should have scored. He has a problem with shooting. He shoots way too close to the keeper. 
His shots are also very, very small. In fact, where is he? Uh, no, that was not the one I wanted to see. Here he is. His finishing is eight. That kind of makes sense. He's actually gotten worse at his finishing somehow. Mason just getting... Oh, good tackle there. I thought that was just <laughs> going to be a penalty there, unfortunately. But luckily, oh, oh, Vucevic just about keeps hold of the ball there. Zvodersky apparently has taken a knock, so hopefully we'll be able to get into half-time. Bradley is not on the bench, which is a bit of a problem. Saying that, we do have Latty Fairweather on the bench, but he's only a right back, so we'll see what we can do for that in a moment. Um, happy with the number of shots on target. Keep it up. That's fine. How bad is Zvodersky? Uh, struggling. What injury is it? Okay, Svidersky needs to come off. So Collins is going to come on at left back. I don't think there's any other changes that we need to make for the moment. So we'll just carry on as is. Michael Collins again at left back. So hopefully it's not a serious injury to Svidersky. Would have been handy to have Bradley on the bench. I'll have to make sure he's uh, available for the next game. It's just a shame that Latty Fairweather, I don't know why he can't play left back. If he can play right back, surely he's good to play left back. Although I think he is a right footer, so, but. I mean, come on, it's uh, surely not completely undoable. Uh, at the moment, uh, holding on to a 1 0 lead as Maidstone trying to come at us in this second half, but hopefully we just put them away. With a little bit more ease, there is Collins, so makeshift to left back if there ever was one. He's not exactly playing well at centre back, so maybe he just slots in well at left back. He needs to do something else. Good move there from Adebiyi, and that is a lovely little ball across to Hales Doherty. He can finish on that one, give him a chance like that, as in an open goal, and he'll score it. It's when there's a goalkeeper in the way, it's a little bit of a problem for him. He did well to avoid that tackle, did Adebiyi. He just puts the ball right across the face of the goal, keeper doesn't know what to do. And Hales Doherty just has to guide that into the back of the net. That is exactly how it should be. Free kick. And there is Godmark Ford yet again. Rising high above his defender. Coyle is looking a bit tired. He has played a lot of football recently. Which is probably more than I would have actually given him uh, credit for. I didn't anticipate he would have a lot of games like that. He was meant to just be a backup for Latty Fairweather. Which he is in this game because Fairweather was tired. Uh, if we can clear this corner, there we go. Hales Doherty, I'm looking at bringing him off very soon as well because he's just come back well, from two or three days out. I mean, you saw him in the last game. It's not like he hasn't come back from a long time out, thankfully. And we are at the moment at the 72nd minute mark. Let's see who we need to bring on. Coyle is tired, so Latty Fairweather is going to come on. Oh, God, have we got a lot of tired players. Um, Hales Doherty is tired. We've only got one sub left. So Durant is going to come on. I think everyone else is just going to have to hold out, unfortunately. We only have three subs at this level. They really should just allow non-league clubs to make the full five substitutions in a game. We, we play a lot of games. 46 league game season plus cups. You're looking at about 50 games a season. And that was just unfortunate. We tried to win the ball there. Who was that? Was that Collins? I feel like that was Collins who was trying to win the ball and just missed completely. Can I... Yeah, it was Collins. I was trying to click on him. Yeah, it is Collins. He was also on a booking. Fantastic. I do not want to see that again. Thank you very much. We all know what happened there. It was a, uh, a bit of a lapse from Senor Collins. Just, just uh, take off focusing on the wings because it does tire them out. That's the one thing I have noticed about FM22. It ties out your wingers very very quickly if you have them focused I have to play focused on them for a long long time as in an entire match emoting oh what a finish by Ada BE first goal of the season what a way to open your account for the season he's more of a creator as Ada BE but he just showing there he can score a goal every now and then but what a beauty this was look at this for a finish oh not right there there we go oh first time as well love it Sometimes you just need some of your better players to pull out something like that, and he did that with a plum. Praise the boys, keep their motivation up a little bit. I'm just gonna reduce the tempo. Waste a bit of time, just a bit of game management. You know, I love to do that. It's like a hallmark at this point. I feel more people should do that. 
even if it's just even if it's in videos just do it very very quickly because it does it can save you I don't blame Dugmore for that because that was a legit tackle of Hang on, let's just see how this penalty goes, but that was a legit tackle and it is a goal, which is a shame, but it's the same problem from FM21. And you know what, we're not going to go back and view it because you can pause it and go back and view it and you'll see it's a legit tackle. I don't know why the game can't recognise a tackle in the area that's actually legitimate. Oh god, so we've got a minute to go here and there's a highlight unless we're going to score from it. But this is a bit of a problem. No, no. Oh, God. Mmm, <sighs> it's been coming. And right there, that is... Well, I don't know why Rusevich was so far over, but that right there was not how we wanted it to go. Oh, don't do this. No, come on. This game is utterly... I think this is the moment the game is saying, time's up. Roughly translated, your, your good times are up. You've had your good luck. But to lose it from there is a bitter pill to swallow. My goodness, wow. <sighs> we lost our first game of the season. And that was bitter. In the last few minutes, it all started with that penalty, which wasn't even a penalty. 91st, 93rd, 94th. That hurts. I think the other teams around us actually flopped as well. Well, what about Chesterfield? How did they do? Chesterfield lost. Where's Scunthorpe? Scunthorpe drew. I mean, we knew this was going to come eventually. I just didn't think it would be in that fashion. It kind of hurts, but hopefully it won't be the beginning of a downturn. I hope. Right, we will be back. We'll get a bunch of games done. We will be back. Depending on who we get in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round, we could come back for that. But otherwise, hopefully, we'll be back for a first round of the FA Cup game because we're still non-league, so cup games are still going to be very, very important. Cup runs are still going to be a good way of getting money in. So hopefully we'll come back for what I hope will be a first round clash. Oh, that hurt at the end. That really did hurt. That was a bit of a bit of pill to swallow. All right, despite how that episode has ended, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you hit the like button down below and click subscribe for more Football Manager content, especially Unemployed to Legend uploads that are coming up. But thank you so much for watching and look forward to seeing you all in the next video.